Hello, this is John from caveoprogramming.com and this is a tutorial on interrupting threads in Java. So um, if you've done any multi-threading work in Java, you will have come across interrupted exception over and over again. And to be honest with you, this is kind of a flaw in Java multi-threading, arguably, because you're always forced to handle that exception um, and it just makes the code look messy. But um, you can make use of it if you want to. And I'm going to show you how to in this tutorial. So um, I've got my main program in Eclipse set up here and I'm going to put just a sysout saying um, starting there. And before the program finishes, I'll have a sysout saying finished. And in the middle here, let's have some uh, code that just runs some stuff in its own thread. So I'll say thread thread equals new um, thread and I'll say thread thread dot start and I'll have thread dot join because I want my program to wait for this thread to terminate and here I've got to handle one of those interrupted exceptions that I was just talking about so I'll, I'll put in a throw here to throw it out my main program and in here I'll put some kind of labor intensive code um, to simulate doing some kind of um, work that uses up a lot of C, uh, CPU. So let's add the um, run method here. And I'll have a random number generator like that. And I'm going to have a loop, a big loop here. Um, I'll start it at zero and I'll say I'll keep it going for a million iterations. So I'll use um, scientific notation here and say um, i less than 1e6, so that's just, that's 1 million. It's um, uh, 1 times 10 to the power of 6, or in other words, a 1 followed by 6 zeros. And um, in this loop, just to use up some processor, I'll say math.sign, and I'll make the sign work on the next double um, random value got from a random number generator. So this is just some labor intensive code. And let's run that and check it works. Um, so it starts and finishes very quickly. And if I increase this to seven, so obviously how long this takes will depend on how powerful your computer is. And there's a noticeable pause now. And if I go up to 100 million iterations of this, now there's a few seconds in between the start and the finish. So um, after I've started the thread, I'll sleep for just half a second to give it time to really get underway. And then I'll say, um, actually, maybe rather than call this thread to make it a bit less confusing, I'll call it T, um, which may be slightly simpler. So normally you don't give um, like a variable, just one letter name, but here I think it's pretty clear what T is. So, and um, I'll say t dot, uh, t dot interrupt. Um, so what t, t dot interrupt does is it, um, it attempts to interrupt the thread. So what would you think will happen if I now run this code? Because we're starting the thread, which takes a few seconds to run, but after half a second, I'm calling t dot interrupt. Let's see what happens. It does, in fact, exactly the same thing as before. Um, because uh, t.interrupt does not kill the thread. And there, there is actually a thread.stop method, but as you can see from this line through it here, it's actually deprecated and we shouldn't use that. Um, it's deprecated because of reasons having to do with, um, if you just kill a thread, it's, you know, it's not very pretty and you could um, have problems with your state not being, you know, left in a good state or something like that. Um, so really, if you want to stop a thread, probably the best method to do it is the method that I showed you in the second tutorial. Just use a volatile Boolean flag or something like that. Um, but you, you can nevertheless, um, this of course does have a function and we'll see what it is. Supposing I have um, either a, a wait in here or it could be a sleep um, or basically probably anything that throws an interrupted exception. Thread.sleep throws an interrupted exception. So let's have, have a sleep for one millisecond in this loop and just handle the 
interrupted exception. And if the inter interrupted exception is caught, I'm going to say um, we've been interrupted and I will then just break out of the for loop to terminate it. So if I run this, um, you can see that um, thread.sleep does get interrupted and it throws this exception and then I'm um, deciding what to do about it basically. And how does thread.sleep know that the thread has been interrupted? Well, um, what interrupt does is it just sets a flag in your thread and you could check that thread, you could check that flag yourself if you want to. And the way to do it is, um, so I'm going to say if, if this flag is set, I want to do sys out um, and I'll say interrupted and then I'll just break as before. And what I need to check is I need a kind of handle to the running thread and you can get that by saying thread dot um, current thread. So it's a static method of the thread class dot is interrupted. So I say if thread dot current thread is interrupted, then I will gracefully terminate my thread. And if I run that, you can see that it works. So just calling uh, interrupt on your thread object um, causes this flag to be set, which you can then detect using this line of code here. Um, let's let's see how that would work with a thread pool rather than a thread object. So I will um, I'll copy this code here. Um, I'll just do I'll cut it in fact with Control X, and I'll do a very similar thing here. But I'll use a thread pool. I'll say executor service service exec equals um, executors dot new cached thread pool. And this is all stuff that um, I covered in previous tutorials in this series. And um, I'll submit a um, callable to that. So I'll say new callable and let's parameterize it or just on void. I don't, I don't need the return type. And um, I'll implement the missing method here, uh, which is uh, this call method. And I'll get, the re I'll get um, a future from this as well, so I can control the thread. I'll say future, and if you use void for the type for callable, you should use question mark in the future here. And I'll call that just foo equals, and add the input there with control shift O. And now in here, I'm just going to paste the code that I used before, like this. So we've got this code that does some labor intensive stuff, but it does check to see if the thread's been interrupted. And now there's two ways we can interrupt this code now. So um, once again, uh, well, after I've submitted my um, code, um, I'm going to just do um, exec.shutdown which, um, as I said in a previous tutorial, doesn't won't, it won't kill your program. It will just shut down a kind of managerial thread that this, um, this thing runs, which means that your program will terminate after, um, or rather, it, yeah, basically your, your program will terminate um, after, um, after the threads are finished rather than just being kept alive because this, this is still running a thread. This would still run a thread um, by itself if you didn't go shut down and you want it to just finish um, finish doing what it's doing and let you shut down. But anyway, um, so I'll call shut down and then um, I'll have that sleep in again just for half a second. And so if I if I run this now, it's just going to basically, you know, um, oh yeah, and also I want to wait here. So I need the equivalent of thread.join and I want to say exec dot await termination and let's just wait for like um, a day um, not that it's going to take a day but so now this this is the same program that I had before basically uh, starting and it does all this code and then after a while it finishes I've also got that thread sleep in there so it's going to be half a second slower quite a lot slower I don't really know why to be honest but anyway um, 
So now after half a second, um, what I can do is I could use the future object to cancel the running thread and that will have the same effect as calling thread.interrupt. It will set this, this interrupted flag. So cancel takes uh, a Boolean argument and if you say false, then it will, will, it will cancel um, the thread if it hasn't already run. But if it is already running, it won't. So you see this doesn't change anything. But um, if I set that to true, it will set the interrupted flag um, after your thread started running. So if I run this now with true, you can see that we're, we're catching this interrupted status here. And the other way, the other way to do it, I'll comment that out, is of course you can call um, exec dot shut shut down now, which unlike shut down, which just shuts down the managerial thread after all the threads have finished running, shut down now attempts to get um, attempts to kill all running threads. But again, it doesn't literally kill them; it just sets that interrupted flag. So if I run this again, same effect. So that's uh, basically pretty much all there is to interrupting threads, as I know. And um, uh, it's, yeah, maybe it's sometimes useful, but you could equally well just use a Boolean flag most of the time. But it could be handy if you want to use your future to um, tell your threads to stop running uh, for some reason. Um, I don't know. I've never felt the, the need to use this system, really, but you could you could find a use for it, I'm sure. Okay, so um, this code will be on caveofprogramming.com and um, there's going to be uh, maybe just one more um, video in this series. Um, the next one is going to be on multithreading in Swing GUI programs. So join me again for that. Um, and until then, happy coding. <laughs>